run out boat. We bought a boat and we live on it. Which side are we going to go right? Um, I need to be this. Is this what side of the room is always going to be on? Yeah, always. My left hand side. Yeah, we should have our first night on it. It's about to sit down for our first dinner in the boat. We're very excited, aren't we? I'm buzzing. What are we going to do tomorrow? Um, we're going to go through all the cables, pull them all, <laughs> work out what they are, label them. Mark's going to do provision shopping. Get a boat, a bit of a scrub. Oh, we need to empty the bilge. That's probably the first thing we need to do. Yeah. We have a bilge full of water, which we need to empty. This is my motto. <laughs> it was a really smooth night, <laughs> very <laughs> creaky. I didn't sleep very well. I feel a bit puffy. Your um, eyes are quite puffy, aren't they? Yeah, a little ridiculous. <laughs> They're just getting used to all the new noises, the creaks, the bumps, the bangs, the little hums that come on. Like, what is the, what was that? <laughs> I slept uh, quite well, I found it quite um, hypnotising. We moved on to the boat yesterday, it, the bilges are practically full of water and there's no manual bilge pump or we can't find an automatic bilge pump yet. So the first thing we have to do is bail the bilges by hand and then quite importantly find out where these pumps are because we're going to need those. <laughs> We spent about 10 minutes yesterday like taking up all the floorboards trying to find the bilge pump. We couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> no, that's quite important one. We might have to install one today if we can't find one. Oh god. Oh god. What have we done? Got my trusty pad. We're going in. So. We've got one bucket full already. It doesn't even look like the water's gone down any, so I think this is going to be quite a big job. So let's carry on. So it's salty water, which is, I guess, kind of worrying because where's that water coming from? There's another hole, a load of pipes and inlets and outlets down here, and all the seacocks have been left open for God knows how long. So it could be anywhere. So what I'm going to do is completely dry it out. I'm going to have to put my saucepan away and move on to mug soon to get to the little bits and then it's going to be sponges and paper towels. I'm going to completely dry it and then we can just check back and monitor it every hour or so and run some taps, flush the toilet, do everything we can to see if anything's leaking into here. I did taste it and it is salty so I'm really hoping it's not the holding tank that's leaking into there. This is Ellie's experiment. We had to pause bailing the bilges out so Ellie could run her experiment of how long it takes to boil the kettle. <laughs> and That's because you said it wouldn't even boil a cup of, a cup of tea. I did think that, so I thought gas. the gas bottle was empty. I'd say that's boiling. You're going to make yourself a deluxe Colombian freeze dry some coffee. I am so excited for this one. Yum. Second bucket down. Bucket five. Still going there, babe. Yeah. <laughs> this is bucket number nine. 12 litres every time. Here we go. Here's bucket number 10. <laughs> that is 120 litres bailed out with a saucepan. It's my contribution to helping. Bucket 15 now. What are you doing down there? So, we found we can remove more of the cabin sole. So that's come up and we've located this pump. However, it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. So on the boat was another pump. This one was just lying around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to put the hose on this pump, see if this will work. This is not suitable for this position because of the way the handle would do it. I have to sit like that, which is no good to us. So. I just want to make sure that this system works and then we're going to go out and buy a new bilge pump.
But what I didn't do was put the Jubilee clip on first. No! But it's not a problem. It just means I have to do it from the gross end. It's so slimy, isn't it? It's so horrible. We only had a few days to prepare before our skipper, Tom, arrived to help us safely deliver our newly bought boat from here in Portland Marina to Burnham on Crouch, where we would begin our refit. So we were slightly strapped for time with this underwater addition to the jobs list. Okay, so I think I've got the pipe on the wrong end. So I'm gonna try turning it over. There's no like indication to say which end, so I did just take a bit of a guess. And it's okay, we all make mistakes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was a mistake, more a trial and error. Does anyone want to buy that? We've swapped the pipe over to the side. We've got the pipe in the water. We can't find a pole big enough, so I've got a spare stanchion. That I'm going to run in here. And we're going to be... matter of getting the other end of the bilge pump connected to this. Let's see what we can do. Well, I was going to try that for 10 minutes and then we'll take a break because it's midday now. We need coffee and showers. He's been saying that for about two hours. I know, but I want, <laughs> I want to like, achieve something before we... No, we've done well. So while we're out buying the manual bilge pump, we also thought it was a good idea to buy a electric bilge pump as well. We did actually find an old crusty electric bilge pump right in the sump of the boat. It didn't work, however, all the cables were still attached. We've taken the cables out of there and snipped them down and attached them to this pump and the switches still work, so we can just use the old electrical system, which is great. But for now, it is just gonna stay here because we can't, it doesn't fit through all this mishmash of pipes and then we will get it down to the sump when we refit the boat later. With the automatic bilge pump, we know that it's, even though it's not right down in the sump of the boat, it is in a good position so that if the water level does rise to where it was at the start of the day, we know we can just flick a switch and get rid of the majority of it there and then pump the rest out by hand. We spent the next few days preparing our three day delivery and admittedly, we didn't get much more footage until we set sail.
We made a short pit stop at Sovereign Harbour in Eastbourne to replenish supplies and carry out some essential repairs. We arrived around 5am and set off again at 10, ready for the second leg of the adventure. probably guessed it, but we kept it a secret from Ben's parents, who used to be avid sailors. Ben's brother and sister-in-law brought them down to the marina, telling them there was a Burnham regatta. Safe to say, they did not expect us, especially on our own boat. We made it to Burnham safe and sound. Now it didn't go quite to plan and we knew that when we started this trip it was purely a delivery. We motored probably about 200 miles to the entrance of the Crouch and that's when we put the sails up and we sailed the last 10 miles. I did mention there was some drama, the engine alarm went off, we got this high squeak beep. First of all we thought maybe the engine overheated, it had been running for probably a day and a half straight so we thought maybe it's an engine that hasn't been used in a long time. We did check the engine over before we left the port, as you should, but we didn't know the full state of the engine. I looked into the bilge and it was absolutely full of oil. So all of we've got clearly got a big oil leak in the engine that was just leaking into the bilge. So now is a good time to talk about Tom, our skipper, who was very kind enough to come with us and help us deliver our boat. Hiring a professional skipper was obviously important to us. I haven't sailed yet, so this is a completely new adventure for me. Ben sailed lots as a kid, but isn't, you know, up to scratch just Still yet. Still not comfortable sailing on my own, for sure. Right. Which is why Tom was extremely useful. Obviously, it's really, it's great. He knew everything about sailing. He's so knowledgeable. And when your engine breaks, the one person you want on board is a Royal Navy engineer. Trust us. Yeah, he located the problem. He found the oil, fixed the engine so we could get back safely. And we couldn't be more grateful. So that brings us to the end of our first episode. We really hope you've enjoyed watching our journey. We have a lot more to come. We have a lot of plans ahead of us. Um, it's gonna take us a while, but hopefully you can join us along the way um, and, and follow our updates and our journey as we go. If you've liked this episode, then please subscribe to the channel and follow us as we rip apart this old boat and build our dream home. Coming up in the next week's episode, this seahorse <laughs> and my head. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just go back on what you just said. What, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I can't remember. Okay. okay, ready? Yeah. Shall I start? Yeah. He laughed at me. No. <laughs> I'm laughing the fact that. I'm just trying to piece together. I can't. I don't know why. I don't know where I am now. <laughs>